Hello everybody, a very warm welcome. So in today's class, I am going to start a new unit which is ecology. Yes. Now I'll be dealing with the chapters related to your environment. So in this case, the first chapter you have is chapter 13, Organisms and Population. In this respect, theory discussed already, we have discussed the subjective questions also. Now according to the new pattern, I'll be discussing certain objective type questions which can be asked from this chapter. So please have a look. This is your first question. The formula for exponential growth is C. The questions which will be asked in your examination, they will be very simple type. You can easily attempt them. But the problem which you can face because you don't have any practice for those questions. So that's the reason I'm here with you so that you can have a practice for those questions also. Now what do you have to do, what you have to do in that examination, go through all the different four options. Suppose you are talking about a particular question and you are reading that question and in that case you have read the first option and you are finding that the first option is correct. It does not mean you will only stick to that, go for the other options also. Please read them, do not at all ignore them. Sometimes you can skip a not, sometimes what actually the question is asking because of the environmental pressure, because, because it is your board exam and first time you are appearing for the board exams. Uh, this can create a pressure in your mind, but just get rid of it, read the question properly and just attempt them wisely. So here is your first question, formula for exponential growth is, so exponential growth, this is also termed as J shaped growth curve, whereas the other growth curve which we have is the S shaped growth curve which is a sigmoid growth curve. In the J shaped growth curve the population increases suddenly and it drops and the equation for it is dn by dt is equal to rn, dn by dt is equal to rn. Now what do you mean by d, dn by dt? That means a change in the size of population per unit time. That means within a particular duration of time what actually the change has occurred. Now what do you mean by R? That is a rate of natural increase. This can also be termed as the total number of birth if we minus it by total number of death it will come out to be your R. What do you mean by N? N is your population size. In this case, the R means the biotic potential, that is the biotic potential or we can also term it as biotic potential. Now listen. So, correct option let us find dn by dt is equal to rn. So, I will go for the option that is a d, d, dn by dt in rn. Let us talk about the S shaped growth curve. S shaped growth curve dn by dt is equal to k minus n by k. This value comes into existence, right? So, in this case, this is a very important thing, where the k is termed as a carrying capacity. Let us not discuss this. So, in this case, the k minus n by k, this value came into existence because now we are talking about a carrying capacity. Every environment has some carrying capacity. They cannot sustain n number of individual. There are particular, particular number of resources which is present. So, we have to be wisely in that biotic potential is just a theoretical value. It cannot be attained because there are many factors which work against it. That can be the food, that can be the shelter, that can be any predator, etc. and etc. So, let us talk about the question number 2. Two 
different species cannot live for long duration in same niche or habitat this law is a allen's law b mendel's law c gauss experiment exclusion principle i'll go for the c option gauss competitive exclusion principle this was given by g f gauss Let's understand this. Let me explain you the things in uh, like in a short form. Suppose I am talking about two different species. This is a species 1. This is a species 2. Right? Every species has some requirement from the environment that can be food, that can be shelter or any other thing. So, for this particular species, suppose requirement is 1, requirement type is 1. Is it clear? Requirement type means their requirement uh, for food and shelter is of a particular type. Let us say these are herbivores and they uh, love to live on trees. For the species 2 also, requirement is type 1, same type of requirement. G. F. Gauss states that when we have two species having a same kind of requirement from the environment, then they will not be able to stay together for a long duration of time. One will survive other will be eliminated. One will be able to survive in a better manner. One will be you can say more powerful, another will be less powerful. So, the powerful one will eliminate the another one. Is it clear to you? Very important contribution in the field of ecology where we talk about the coexistence of two different species, what are the different factors which affect them. What are the factors which cause them to live symbiotically? All these things was beautifully explained by G. F. Gauss and that theory was termed as a G. F. or that is Gauss competitive exclusion principle. So, there will be two species, there will be competition, one will be able to survive, another will not. Let us talk about the question number 3. An association of individual of different species living in same habitat and having a functional interaction is termed as a biotic community. See what are they saying? An association of individuals of different species, they are saying we have two species. This is a species 1 and this is a species 2. Both of them they are living together having the same habitat and functional interaction, habitat same and they are showing the functional interaction this is termed as a biotic community am I right. So, biotic community can have any dominating character that dominating character can be a biotic one or a abiotic one that depend upon the type of community which we are talking about. Is it clear? So, I will go for the option which is a biotic community. So, this is a very easy question. It is just that all those hierarchy categories you should have a knowledge about what actually their definitions are, how we can club them etc and etc. It should be clear to you in your minds. Let us proceed towards the fourth question. Now, you must be finding this question very much similar, familiar I can say. This diagram without looking at the statement, I can say that this is the diagram of a pyramid. We are talking about a pyramid. So, what type of human population is represented by, by following age pyramid? This is an age pyramid. Now, if you have to define age pyramid, how will you define? You will say 
Now, each pyramid is a graphical representation showing the three different group of individual such as pre-reproductive group of individual, the reproductive group of individual and the post-reproductive group of individual. And that gives us an idea whether a population is expanding or population is declining or population is stable. This we get to know because of these age pyramid. Now, as you can see in this case, the this uh, just make this correction, this is a pre-reproductive because at the base we always have a pre-reproductive individual. Now, these are the pre-reproductive individual always present at the base, after that the reproductive individual then the post-reproductive individual. As you can see that in this case the pre-reproductive individuals, they are very less. Less number of individuals are there, less will enter into the reproductive phase, less will enter into the post-reproductive phase. What can I say? I can say that this particular population is declining. And such shape is termed as a urn shape. Urn shape. In this case, the triangular shape is there, the bell shaped is there, all these shapes are there. So, depending upon shape also, you can derive whether this is a population, uh, whether this particular population is declining or this is expanding or it is a stable type of population. Is it clear? So, let us look at the option. So, which option we will go for? We will go for the option C which is a declining population. Is it clear? Let us proceed towards the last question. Which one of the following is one of the characteristic of biological community? Now, reason why I have chosen this question is in this question many of you student will do this mistake. If you remember our session I have discussed about the certain characteristics that characteristic was mortality, natality, sex ratio remember those characteristics which we have studied in session that was a characteristic of a population but they are asking the characteristic of biological community. Now this is a big thing for you what will you will what will you take in this option these options i'll go for the option a that is a stratification natality mortality sex ratio all these these are the character of of population not of biological community. Let us talk about the stratification. Stratification, the another name of stratification is arrangement. More precisely, I can say the special distribution. Every population, every species, they have a particular requirement for their resources, and depending upon them, they are have they show a special distribution. That is a characteristic of a biological community. So, I will go for the option A which is a stratification. Is it clear to you? Was it easy? This was again a very easy question, a bit tricky to make you realize that you have to look at your theory part seriously. Just read them very carefully. If you will read them, if you will follow them, if you will just uh, not like many students, they just cram all these notes. Do not do that. Just understand them, what actually this uh, your slavers or your chapter is saying, just focus on them and then try to attempt these type of question. I am 100 percent sure you will be able to attempt good marks, uh, you will be able to get good marks in your examination. So, take care of yourself, let us wind up the session here. Next session I will start a new chapter, take care. Thank you so much students for watching this.